Welcome back, lovelies. Happy day. I hope everyone is feeling rested, nourished, and determined today. Welcome to part two of my three-part mini-series. This is truly an introduction of the essence of what is Empower Your Path. Again, my name is Rosa Guerrero Contreras. I am a life coach, and I'm here with Empower Your Path to share with you all of the goodies. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like what we're talking about, please do subscribe to our channel, click that little notification bell, and like the video if you feel so called to engage with us, send us a comment, uh, we love to hear from you. So if this is the first video that you're joining in on, please do go back and see my intro video where I give an introduction of what all of this is, and I also provide for you a number of disclaimers. Okay. So the first part of this series was vessel care. Was talking all about the vessel was really like a pre to the pre to the pre to really getting into like what is vessel care? What are the different ways that we can take care of our vessel? When I say vessel, I mean body, right? And so I am relating to the body as a vessel, a meat suit, an avatar, something that is temporary, right? Because we don't take our body with us to the afterlife. We come into this world, into this body, our soul came from somewhere. We can debate later on what the truth is about where we come from and all that jazz. But just to keep it general, we come into this world, we leave this world, and we have a body to show for it while we're here. So the first video was all about how to take care of your body or what to think about, what to consider, and what the different ways in which that you can easily transform your vessel are. Now, today we're going to talk about our environment. So, as biological organisms, our vessel, right, a lot of sources and places will call us organic, right? We are organic beings, particularly because, take me back to, to grade school, take me back to science class, um, and remember schnapps, right? Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. Those are the main components of or organic being, and we are composed of a lot of it. Okay, so that being said, anything that is inorganic, anything that is synthetic, anything that is man-made is typically not good for our bodies, typically not good for our biologies, but guess what? There are all of these things, chemicals being a huge component, and if you want a more in-depth understanding, please do follow Connecting Consciousness on Instagram. Um, brother over there gives so much in-depth research on all of the different chemicals and all of the different ways to help yourself, right? But depending on where you're coming from, this is a very introductory, very rudimentary example of switching over to a less toxic life. Okay, via lifestyle change, but first and foremost, via your awareness. So what I'm here today to do is help to bring some awareness to um, all of the different ways in which toxicity can be in your life. So one of the components to um, my program, uh, specifically my one-on-one -on -one life coaching program, if you so choose, is a toxicity evaluation. So I walk you through all different aspects of your life where there could be unsuspected toxicity. And unfortunately, we live in a society where chemicals and toxicity reign supreme. Unfortunately, in our tap water, there are high amounts of fluoride, right? Which the American Dental Association and other white coach professionals will tell you don't have any, there's no problem to it. It doesn't hurt anybody, it's okay. All right, sure, I'll believe that. Absolutely never. So we now know that amongst many other chemicals, fluoride calcifies your pineal gland. Now, I'm not gonna get so much into the um, spiritual component of why toxicity in our environment is detrimental to our health, but let's get back to our evaluation. Okay, so this truly is an intimate review of the spaces that you spend time in and what is immediately around you. So the places to start, and when we think about toxicity, it doesn't have to be 
chemicals. It doesn't have to be, you know, like crazy, scary things. We could really think about toxicity also as stale energy, right? So if you're thinking about your immediate space, I was having a conversation with my husband about where I was going to start this conversation because I didn't want to be intrusive necessarily. So I was like, Ooh, let's start in the bathroom. Ooh, let's start in the room. No. So wherever you live, let's start in the common space, right? So your common space typically is going to be the area where there's the most consideration applied. Maybe, <laughs> who knows? But the first question I want you to ask yourself about your common space is, is your common space an accurate reflection of you? Is your common space somewhere that you want to spend time in? Is your common space comfortable? Does your common space smell good? If you go outside for 15 minutes, let's say you, you know, take a walk up and down the block or around the block and you come back inside, does your common space smell good? This is really, really important because if you're someone that is not on top of their personal hygiene or maybe you have animals and you haven't properly cleaned their, their litter or their bodies in a long time, being in these spaces can actually be harmful on a, on a small level to you and everybody living in your space, right? So one of the best examples of this is if there is a strong smell of urea in your house. We need to do something about that, okay? That's just an example about living spaces, um, especially if there's a lot of clutter around. Um, if this is something that interests you, in how to balance your living space. There's a ton of research that you can do on feng shui so that you can, there's actually a science, right? Or it's more of an art, right? To designing your space and energetically having it flow according to your liking, your preference and your needs. Okay, so that's the first question. The second question is, how do you feel when you're in this space? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel happy? Do you feel joyful? Do you feel positive or do you feel like you need to get out? Do you not spend a lot of time in this space because you're avoiding it altogether? Is it so overwhelming that you never want to be there? Depending on how you feel in that space, that is going to correlate with the actions that you need to take to change it, okay? And this is also something that um, there's so many layers right, to your space, how you associate to your space, the items that you bring into your space. This is definitely a, an area where I highly encourage having community, right, having that one maybe Libra or Virgo friend, other people who have preferences, but also that really want to consider your needs when it comes to that space. When it comes to hoarding and all of that, there are a lot of emotional attachments um, that I'm not going to cover in this video, but your environment is so important. And right now we're only talking about the common area, right? But there is a relationship that you have to every space in your house, right? And it is dynamic. There are levels to the ways that you organize your space, to the functionality of your space, to the way that you approach, especially in your design, are you the type of person who loves trinkets and who loves, you know, to have like little, little dolls and action figures and all kinds of stuff all over the counters? Or are you someone like me who just wants the design to be perfectly functional and useful and anything else otherwise is extra? Hmm. Ask yourself these questions if you haven't already. Next question is, do you often entertain doing things in this space that you never get around to, right? This is particularly important because, for example, I have a, we, we created a shoe shelf, essentially, we built it, and um, I've been meaning to paint it, and I haven't painted it, and the fact that it's so plain, and this isn't, you know, astronomical, doesn't make a huge, you know, impact on my energy or anything like that, but it is something that I've had on my to-do list for a long time, and I haven't done it, so it's important to ask yourself, are there things like this that you keep holding off on? And if you can consciously create some space during the week or on the weekend to really like make a day out of it, make it fun. Maybe it's something, maybe it's a project that you do on Sunday after brunch or whatever it may be. 
I assure you, I promise you, and I also look forward to when I get around to painting the shoe shelf, I will be super excited about it because it's going to bring so much life. But we'll just keep in that example of the shoe shelf. My issue here is um, that I can't land on how I want to paint it. Um, my husband told me, don't think about it, just paint it. Um, I don't know, you, you haven't seen my art skills. I'm not, I'm not very confident in my art skills, but we will get around to a design that I will be inspired and all of these things, right? So I am complicated in and of myself. Um, next question. What is one thing that you can spend five minutes doing in that space? We're not even gonna say it's every day. We're not even gonna say it's twice a week or whatever. We're just gonna say the next time you find yourself scrolling mindlessly on social media, the next time you find yourself wasting energy in ways that do not serve you, can your subconscious kick into gear and say, hey, remember you wanted to do that thing? Five minutes, literally. I strongly suggest and challenge you to put a five minute alarm on your phone and just do whatever that is. Maybe it's reorganizing a bookshelf. Maybe it's sweeping. Maybe it's vacuuming. Maybe it's removing the couch cover and putting a new one. Maybe it's rearranging your throw pillows. It's really whatever whatever is gonna like spice it up, whatever is gonna bring that change, the smallest changes to your environment can make the biggest impacts on your energy. And that also helps your mental health. <gasps> it's all connected. Okay. Um, yes, another suggestion, right, is if you don't want to, like some people are very averse to like rules and time and structure, play a song, play one song right? Ideally a longer song so that you can spend more time on that activity. Um, or you can also, again, right, create community around this. Invite a friend over, someone that you feel really comfortable with. Invite a cousin over. I know it can be sometimes embarrassing and it's a really, you know, it's really intimate to invite people in your home, especially when it's like, oh, but this is my house. I'm supposed to know what I'm supposed to do with my house. But again, not everybody is, is raised in the same way. So if your environment is causing you problems or if you don't have a good relationship with your environment, I highly recommend that you focus on that and that you think about it. A dynamic conversation, all we did today is cover your common area, but there's so much to be said about your kitchen space, about your workspace about your restroom, where you take care of your hygiene the most, about your sleeping area, about your clothes, about everything. Every piece and part of your environment is a reflection of you, right? And in this journey, right, the, the purpose of personal development and the reason why I became a coach is because I want to help people transform in the ways that most speak to them. I want to help really climb this ladder of, we can call it personal development, we can call it self-expression, we can call it the journey to self-mastery. I'll be talking about that more in the next video. So there is so much to be, there's so much more to be said about your environment. There's so much more to be said about the toxicity in your environment. And a really, really low level of toxicity is clutter, is cleanliness, is stale energy in your environment. So we will keep it simple for now. This was just a little highlight to show you what else could come in the topic of detoxifying your environment. If you're curious about a true full evaluation of toxicity, please do contact me. Remember to, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, please do follow at empower.yourpath. If you like this video, hit subscribe, click the notification bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos, as well as like this video and share some love. Thank you all so much. Again, my name is Rosa Guerrero Contreras with Empower Your Path. Super happy to be here and I'm wishing you all the best.